All right, welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and I apologize, but we got to deal with the assholes outside with the leaf blowers. And uh, I just can't stand living in North Carolina. I'm moving as soon as I, I, I – I'm just – I'm done, so done with North Carolina. First off, people don't know how to drive here. It, it's just insane. Second off, you can't live in a house like a normal person unless you're a millionaire, apparently. Everywhere in North Carolina, they got these apartment complexes that cost twice as much now than when I first moved here because every other day they blow the leaves around trying to make it look pretty or something. It's like, oh, congratulations, you removed some dangerous leaves. I mean, visually, I like the leaves on the ground, so every time I hear the leaf blower, I just want to punch the guy in his face. I know it's not his fault. The poor bastard's just outside in the sun blowing leaves around because the idiots in your office are like, oh my god, it's just a leaf. Get it? You know? It's like, come on. Anyway, so you guys have been asking me, hounding me to talk about this. I wanted to show this image. Not this. I wanted to show this picture first off because uh, this is great. You got Lori, Carl, Judith. You got kind of the Grimes family and the Walsh family. Maybe kind of, sort of. I still think it would be really cool if we get further on down the line and they do a blood test and here uh, Judith is Rick's kid. I think that would be awesome. But we all know... It's probably Shane's. Anyhow, a lot of you were talking about this article where I guess they were doing a Ask Chandler Grimes something on Reddit. Uh, it's an Ask Me Anything AMA. And yeah, that's what it is, right? And I'm not real big with those. I kind of just skim the highlights. I never participate in any of them. But somebody said the time skip would have been a perfect opportunity to cast a new actor to carry on the role. It would Right here would have been able to cast a better actor who could carry on the show. And Chandler Riggs did admit, yeah, he was being pretty lazy. Here's his full response, and then we'll talk about it. Been re-watching The Walking Dead over the last couple of months, and I agree, lol. I think I was decent for the first few years, but I definitely got lazy when I should have utilized the writers giving me more material. However, for seasons 4 through 7, and some of 8, I was putting the majority of my effort into school, like a loser, not trying to toot my own horn here, but I took like 10 AP classes throughout high school for some dumbass reason. I guess I just wanted to hate myself even more and put a lot more effort into my education than into my craft. This is super evident as I'm watching my earlier lackluster performances, but in season 8 specifically in my last few episodes is where I feel like I had my most impactful work. I wasn't focused on school since I had decided to move out to LA and I wanted to leave a strong legacy for Carl on the show. Plus, going forward, I wanted to spread or spend way more time expanding my abilities as an actor and make sure I live up to the standard that I set for myself. And so far, I have. These last couple months have been extremely productive for my craft, and I feel my performances have become so much more powerful and include an amazing amount of depth. I'm super proud of them and really can't wait to show you guys. In hindsight, and in the best interest of the show, I do feel like if I didn't get killed off, things would not have gotten better on my end, and The Walking Dead would have been better off recasting Carl. Don't get me wrong, I loved everything about playing Carl, and it would have been really awesome to play out all of those storylines, but it would have been juggling but I would have been juggling college and the show, and my performances would suffer because of it, as shown when I was in high school. Wow, this got super long-winded, sorry, but the TLDR, yeah, I sucked when it mattered, but I'm good, I'm a good actor now, I promise, please someone hire me. <laughs> Alright, for one, because I'm going to get a bit negative, uh, for one, I think this is a very mature thing for him to notice, or for him to say, and a very um, self-aware thing that will actually help. If he takes this seriously and actually works on his craft, I think this could only help him moving forward, not hurt him. I've seen a lot of people, and I know they mean well, but a lot of people on Facebook are like, oh, honey, no, 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 you're doing good, you're doing good, don't worry about it, da, da, da. And I feel like, in a way, that's that's dangerous to tell someone. Uh, when I used to spar with a friend of mine who was serious about getting into the MMA, uh, before he went to prison, but if he put his arm down or if he was telegraphing a punch, I, I didn't baby him and say, oh, no, honey, lift up that arm or nothing. No, because if I don't, you know, 
He could get a broken nose. He can lose a fight. He could physically get hurt. You know, I'm going to crank him in the face if he puts his arm down and gives me enough time to sneak a jab in there. Now, when it comes to Carl, yeah, he's not in immediate physical danger, but the the, the same idea applies to his career. I bet you this was a massive wake-up call. And, you know, his career and his livelihood. Babying someone and telling them, no, you're doing great, you're doing good. No, there, if you sit back and look at a whole collection of his performances on The Walking Dead compiled into one, you're going to see clear weaknesses and moments where he was being just lazy and phoning it in. And there's a couple moments where I don't know what was going on, whether it, he was just in the in the zone or he was vibing and comfortable, but there's a few moments, I think in season six there was one I pointed out, uh... Yeah, I think it was season six where he had a, a few lines where it was like, oh, if he harnessed that, um, it wasn't stiff, it wasn't jagged, it wasn't jarring, it was um, uh, it was smooth and organic, and it felt like Carl as a living character. It was you were more easily to be immersed in the world just with how the performance was was done, performed. If he did that throughout his whole career, you would have been fine. You know what I mean? He probably would have been better for it. But like I said, this is a wake up call where he goes off the show and then maybe he starts going around the internet, hearing some thoughts and opinions. And then something gets through to him. Fans talking like he read in the comment box down below. And then for him to admit to himself, yeah, you know what? I was kind of, now I don't think he should take this as an excuse and be like, oh, it was school's fault. I'm really good. No, you need to back up your words, and I think this is going to, if he does, improve his craft. Back up your words and work on your craft and get better for the jobs that are coming. Because I'm telling you right now, he was off The Walking Dead. We've seen other actors. They're off a show, and people are hounding to pick him up on another show. We got Sasha. She's dead. Now, keep in mind, Sasha died first on the show, even though we saw it. Um, after we heard about her casting, but in real life, she got written off the show first and then picked up on Star Trek, but it did it so fast. A lot of fans thought she got picked up on Star Trek, so they had to kill her off. That's not true at all. Just look into that. You'll see that a lot of actors get off the show and they, John Bernthal's career exploded. You got, um, the girl who played Beth, even when she got off, she got picked up for like two projects and we're talking immediately. Carl goes off the show and he's looking for work. It takes him a year. And that is because there is, uh, it's clear in Hollywood, you know, they're a cutthroat business unless you want to suck in other ways, <laughs> you know, listen, you need to perform or else you're not going to get a job. So my one thing, if, if Chandler Riggs can hear one little piece of advice from a, a shithead nobody, don't use your job as an excuse back up what you are saying and actually work on your craft and I guarantee he'll start landing more jobs and showing and proving that he's backing up what he says uh, by uh, being a better actor uh, because of the situation being a bit of a shock and a, and a bit of an eye opener. I think that's the best thing for him instead of just being like, nah, you were good, da 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 I will admit though, I will admit from somebody who since the moment... I can, since my earliest moments, I've always wanted to, I've never had this thought when I was a kid of, of being, and I, I mean, never, not once was I thinking of being like Tom Cruise on a cover of a movie poster, yada, yada. I always had the idea of being the person behind the scenes you never hear about really, maybe a few interviews here and there, but a person that brought the creation together. It was their idea. Maybe they wrote like a writer director. I've always had that passion in my head ever since I was little. That's the type I would be. And then when I was growing up, you got into screenwriting because you, maybe that would help getting into the door. I took acting classes. I learned method acting. Well, I should say training because that's some ridiculously Wow. <laughs> um, if you're interested, look into method acting. I'm telling you what. I know the first – one of the first w jarring experiences I had. I was young too. I was uh, – I forget, like 14 maybe. And I went in for an, uh, one of my first sessions and it was to drink a – if I remember correctly, it was to drink a cup of tea uh, with nothing in it and – and it was supposed to be real and smooth and organic. And my first impulse was, 
if I was on a movie set, I would just have you put tea in my cup. Bitch, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, just put some fucking liquid in the cup, and then it'll look real. And uh, But trust me, there's a whole process to it, and that was just the beginning of a long a weird journey because it was weird for me. I come from a whole different, you know what I mean? You get into some of those classes and it just gets a little, a little strange, but <laughs> you do, you got to do what you got to do. Um, anyway, that sounded way wrong, <laughs> but it's not how I meant it. Anyhow, I think this is good for him as an actor, the being self-aware. I think that again, if he sticks by what he's saying and doesn't use his uh, schooling as an excuse, and he works on his craft, I think he could impress some of us. And maybe in, in five years or ten years, we're like, oh my God, that was you know little Carl from whatever. And now he's, he's running, he's the lead on his own show. You know, maybe ten years down the line, you never know. Just keep at it, and I wish him nothing but the best in his career moving forward. So, all right, thoughts and opinions down in that comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn.